Hello everyone, I'm Vikram P. Maduri here. I'm an SAP architect. And in this session, we are going to discuss about certain real-time FAQs which might be asked in the interview or which might you, you which you might come across when you're working in the real time. So this is this are very, very important for you all to go ahead and understand these concepts. And uh, this is a part one of the real-time FAQs. I'm going to make a couple of few more uh, 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 sessions like this, which will be applicable for all the modules. In respect of which module you're working on, these are all applicable for you. So if you are looking for SAP trainings, you can contact us at info at and we'll take it forward from there. What is an end-to-end -end implementation? This is a general question that you might uh, get on your, your own or you might be asked in your interview uh, in interview process. So entire process of transformation from legacy system. What do, what do we mean by legacy system? Any system which is non-SAP system is called legacy system in our SAP, SAP technology. So legacy system to SAP system is known as end-to-end -end implementation project irrespective of which module which uh, which uh, type of a software in SAP you are implementing this is an end-to-end -end implementation project there are a number of stages required in an end-to-end -end implementation project and these all implement uh, steps stages that we have in uh, implementation project depends upon the uh, methodology that we are using right now for is implementing SAP so for SAP has its own methodology called accelerated SAP uh, ASAP methodology popularly known as ASAP methodology for implementing SAP projects but that does not mean that every one of us have to implement the SAP SAP software on only ASAP methodology it's not like that you might come across a lot of methodologies that uh, we use for uh, different softwares like if we have SDLC and all these things so in a waterfall method and, and different types of methodologies that we have and agile methodology also is there so uh, irrespective of these dif different methodologies SAP suggests you to go for SAP methodology but that does not insist you to go for SAP methodology so there might be some projects which are implemented on, on other methodologies also but let me tell you that the latest version of SAP methodology that is SAP 8 has uh, adopted the agile methodology also into it so uh, agile methodology is also inculcated into the uh, into the SAP methodology which is the latest latest version of it so what are the steps in SAP methodology so project preparation, business blueprint, realization phase, final preparation phase, go live and support and run method, run, run phase. So if at all, if you want to know more in detail about this ASAP methodology, I have given the link of this uh, complete explanation of ASAP methodology in the, in the description of this video. You can check out that ASAP methodology and you can get an idea about the ASAP methodology, which is very, very important for you. And it's mandatory for everyone who is working in real time to understand the ASAP methodology very clearly. So what are the important aspects for a successful SAP implementation? And this is very crucial and we all have to know being in a SAP platform, you all have to be, I mean, like knowing all these concepts or on the steps that we have to make sure that the, you know, the implementation is successful. Proper planning of projects, being meticulous at the time of collecting the business requirements. This is key phase. Uh, collecting the business requirements from the client so proficient in understanding the RISEF in requirements so RISEF stands for reports interfaces conversions enhancements and forms and it sometimes it's also represented as RISEF W so the W uh, represents the workflow so ensuring that all the items promised in the business blueprint are configured and developed and proper testing has been done the unit uh, integration testing unit testing uit regression if in scope and different types of testings that we have will which i'm going to discuss in detail about the testing and what are the different types of testings in the next session not in this session so you can look at look for the part two in which i'm going to discuss in detail about what are the different types of testing that will happen in an sap and sap software when we are implementing a project so again maintain proper documentations the documentations can be of two types 
one is internal to sap and one is an external platform which the client would suggest you to go for so the client would suggest uh, to go for a particular platform on which we are going to update all our documents so ensure you have proper cutover strategy in place so cutover strategy is very very important master and transaction data are loaded in development quality and analysis and pre-production before loading it into the production system so you are you're not going to you're you not suggested to load the data directly into the production system first you have to load it into the master data and then transaction data and then quality and analysis um, uh, uh, server and then we have a pre-production server only then like development quality analysis pre-production server if at all if it is confirmed then you can go ahead with the loading the data into the production server so this would give you a chance to redefine or rectify for data data loading errors so ensure you have uh, completed manual configuration if any so like ft xp tax codes number ranges reset asset reconciliation accounts etc so for successful sap implementation daily have meetings for after go live and ensure you have documented all the user issues meticulously and ensure proper accountability to resolve these calls so we need to make a note of it all the issues that we have we have been coming across uh, during the meetings so discuss the progress on daily basis proper segregation of due dates is very important matrix must be done follow sabans oxley compliance if your client is in us related ensure that the roles and authorizations are being developed according to the segregation of duties train the key users or super users and educate the business users post production issues need to be handled according to a predefined plan so this is very important so these are a few of the uh, of the points that we need to take care for our sap implementation to run successfully or to complete it successfully now, what all important documentations are required so there are uh, there could be a number of documents that are being prepared during the implementation or a life of a project some of the documents here are as follows so remember for most of these documents that we come across and that we make use of in implementation project for all those things sap would give give the implementation partner a template which has been designed by them in the latest version so all the latest versions of sap uh, sap documents will be available and uh, we'll be we'll be able to access them if at all if we are a channel partner for example if if uh, a bmw is our client and i am I'm, I'm from ibm and ibm is implementing an sap project for bmw then ibm will be given all the documents required templates for all these documents that we are talking about so the first one is project charter high level document describe this is a high level document describes the statement of scope outline project objectives identify main stakeholders and define authority of project manager this is what uh, the project charter document would define project plan as per pmboK a formal approved document used to define to guide to execute both project execution and project control so this project plan would uh, mostly focus on the project execution and project control that's what so business process document so business process documents this do uh, set up sets up uh, the guidelines for documenting business process which is collection activities that procedure outcome so basically whatever we have gathered the details from our client are going to be you know put in a business process document and then as is templates usually prepared by the business team documenting present business scenarios so what exactly we do have is before the sap implementation how the business is running and for as is document as we have uh, uh, as we as we discussed earlier for all these documents we will have templates available in sap platform which can be accessed by our implementation uh, 
part documenting present uh, business scenario so business blueprint a kind of legal document that binds both businesses as well as consulting company to deliver the com commitments usually includes gap analysis as well so business blueprint is something which is a legal document and all the templates for this also will be available with sap and that would be shared with the implementing company so uh, this is a legal document which will mention all the details like what are the things that we have to be implemented and in how much time uh, the the process have to be implemented and things like that so in, now business process master list BM, bpml lists of high level business process of the client usually used to monitor the progress and gaps issue register this entails the gaps that can be fulfilled and its impact on the project configuration document configuration documents related to various uh, business processes shows how it being it is being mapped in sap functional specification document mostly written in uh, business languages uh, uh, how a new requirement has to be achieved so when i talk about business language i'll explain you that uh, let me discuss first the technical specification document so this contains the minute technical details of the functional specification prepared by developers with the help of functional consultants now when it comes to a requirement like i need the sales order document so in functional specification document it will mention like you need to you need to consider uh, sales document number sales document created date and sales document created by and the same sales document details uh, all these things have to be have to be mentioned in the report let's say we are talking about a particular document for uh, creation of a report the, so the FSD would have all these details, but the technical specification would give you the details like you need to take VBA, VBELN, VB, VB, VBELN, ERDAT, ERNEM. All these fields have to be taken from a table called VBAK. So those details will be given in the technical specification document where the technical details also are will be mentioned. So this contains a minute technical details of the functional specification prepared by developers with the help of functional consultants. And unit test document. This document is proof of the testing of the transaction done in testing client of the development server. So basically the unit test document is actually the uh, the reference with which the client is going to go ahead and test the serve, test the developments that we have done or the configurations that we have done to make sure what exactly is our is the client's expectation is being met by us or not. So that will be done in the UTD. And test testing issues log accountability required so defect log this is a log contains a brief description of the defects accountable person and close date etc so this is also a very important document and transaction user guides stuges they are popularly called as stuges end user documents they are also called as end user documents these are the end user documents which are being used by the business users for future references these are used for future references user training presentations these are powerpoint presentations that are prepared for the purpose of train to train the business users or super users so i'm, I'm going to discuss with you in detail in another session what are the different what is the difference between business users and super users and all these things so integration test documents this document is the proof of integration test done in the system so could include screenshots as well so test plan test plan is a, is a high level document emphasizing how the test activities are to be completed detail, detailing the scope approach resources and schedule etc so test scripts detailed step-by-step -step document which are used for the purpose of testing they are very helpful to the testers in order to test the transactions and user acceptance test document as we already discussed this document are proof of the tests that are being conducted by the users that end users from the client perspective the risk register this the risk register is an important document this includes anticipated risk probability impact countermeasures and risk owner etc so go live metrics this document summarizes the end user experience end user satisfactions etc 
post go live issues log accountability required this is a log of everyday issues accountable person and its status until the project is handled to the support team and 